Hello friends and welcome to the second chapter in the trilogy The Peristaltic Motion Secrets to Sickness and Health Before we start, I would like to point out a few things First, I'm not a physician If you have any health issues related to the digestive system please consult your doctor Second, for a demonstration I'm showing pictures of the digestive system. Take a note that what you see on the right side of the screen it's located on the left side of your body. For example, here you see the appendix on the left side of the screen but it's located on the right side of your lower abdomen. So let's start. The large intestines or the colon host more diseases than the first two parts of the digestive system. I'm sure you heard about Crohn's disease, polyps, diverticulosis, irritable bowel syndrome, colon cancer, hemorrhoids, and more. To my clinics came customers with those diseases as they were looking for help to improve their condition. In 2008, after helping many of them, I noticed a common cause for colon diseases. Let me show it to you. Looking at the colon, I see it as a roller coaster. The ride enters the colon from the ileum through the leucical valve. In the cecum, the appendix secretes friendly bacteria and immune cells. From there, the right start to go up in the exceeding colon. Then, from the top, it slides through the transparent colon. When it continues its journey down the descending colon, the structure of the sigmoids slows down the ride before its final destination in the rectum. Then it goes out from the anus. Before we examine the diseases in the colon, I would like to point out a pattern that repeats itself. I noticed that many of my customers had diseases related to malfunctioning valves in the digestive system. The esophageal sphincter, which is the first valve, and the pyloric sphincter, the second valve, each show weakness. Leaking valves are the underlying cause of diseases like reflux, gastritis, ulcer, and perhaps even stomach cancers. Then there is the ileocecal valve between the small and the large intestines. Its improper functioning increases the chance to develop Crohn's disease and irritable bowel syndrome. Even the last valve at the end of the digestive system, the anus, is not free of diseases. Chronically swollen hemorrhoids affect many people. By the way, did you know that in the general population, there is only one cause of swollen hemorrhoids? It's the strain many of us apply during bowel movement. If talking about one cause for hemorrhoids, then straining during defecation is also responsible for appendicitis because inflammation of the appendix happens when it's blocked, usually with poop. If it's not because the strain during defecation, then how do you think poop gets inside the appendix? Now, let's examine the diseases in the large intestines to see if the pressure we apply can contribute to diseases in the bowels. Colon cancer is a common disease among men and women. However, in the five foot long colon, some areas are more susceptible to cancer than others. Look at the facts. More cancers occur at the beginning and at the end of the colon. I already mentioned that extra pressure is weakening the valves in the stomach, right? Therefore, I suspected 
that the same pressure also helps to develop colon cancer and other diseases in the digestive system. Experts say that the invention of the toilet about 180 years ago had an ergonomic mistake. The carpenter and the plumber that invented the water closet, which is the first version of the modern toilets, didn't take into consideration our natural posture to defecate. The toilet made people sit doing bowel movement instead of squatting as we used to. This mistake opens up the door to many intestinal diseases. Look, technically it's difficult to have a complete bowel movement while sitting. Here's why. You know how brakes are applied just before the end of the roller coaster ride? Great! Now, towards the end of the bowels, there are two braking mechanisms. One is constantly holding the content of the bowels in the rectum until we feel the urge to defecate. And the other brake is around the anus to be used in case of emergency to tighten the anus muscles to prevent leakage. That happens when we really need to go to the bathroom, right? When sitting, the pablorectalis muscle is in its default condition, just like when we stand, walk, and lay down. The muscle loosens its grip on the anal canal only when squatting, which is the natural posture for defecation. When squatting, both thighs supports the abdomen sides. This action closes the appendix and the ileocecal valve openings. It also straightens the kink in the sigmoid colon, which helps to have a complete bowel movement. Because of the wrong defecation posture, when sitting on the toilet, many of us hold our breath and push downwards. Applying this pressure on the colon can resemble the action of pressing in the middle of a toothpaste tube. When doing that, the two ends of the tube will hold the most pressure, right? That's why colon cancer is likely to occur in both ends of the colon. Now, because of that pressure, at the end of the colon, hemorrhoids swell and bleed. And at the beginning of the colon, the ileocecal valve is leaking backwards to the ileum, causing irritation, inflammation, and Crohn's disease. In addition to that, from that pressure, the appendix can be stuffed with poop. That's the only reason the appendix gets infected and inflamed. Now, as I showed in the first chapter, reflux, gastritis, and stomach ulcers also have the same common cause. Most of the information I brought to you is not new. Some of it I learned over 20 years ago. Even science is aware of the situation, but you already know that the big money is in drugs and not in practical solution. Besides that, people are not willing to give up the habit of sitting on a toilet and return to the old-fashioned squatting. Today, you can find different squatting devices that mimic squatting posture while you are still sitting on the toilet. In my clinics, I advise my clients to get one, and that's my advice to you too. The reason I encourage you to get a squatting stool is in my research, I found that the pressure people apply every day during defecation contributes to over 20 diseases throughout the body. Below this video, you can find a link to purchase the American-made squatting party. When you buy one through my link, you help to support my educational programs. Thank you very much for your support and God bless you. Now, I'm sure you want to know what I found in my research. You see, 
Over 40 years ago, when my congenital heart disease was diagnosed, my cardiologist taught me about the Volsalva maneuver. That's how many years ago cardiologists used to diagnose valve insufficiency. To perform the maneuver, one should hold his breath and push downwards towards the diaphragm. We apply the Volsalva maneuver to release the pressure from the ears when plane takes off, when we blow our nose or a trumpet, when sneezing or coughing, when lifting heavy weight and more. Women using Volsalva maneuver when giving birth, but many people do it day after day when sitting on the toilet for defecation. And that's when problems start. For example, cardiologists are aware of heart attacks and strokes happening during the morning hours when people most likely have a bowel movement. You see, it's not a problem to use the Volsalva maneuver every once in a while when needed. Yet, doing it every day for many years has negative results on our health and well-being. In my research, I found a direct connection between repeated use of Volsalva maneuver to over 20 diseases throughout the body. That's including diabetes, liver diseases, pelvic floor problems in women, and prostate disease in men, and more. Before I end this chapter, I want to remind you that besides the wrong posture we adapt for bowel movement, there are more reasons for diseases in the body and gut. I talk about them in the health puzzle. Yet, when speaking about gut health, the best food must contain fiber. That's because fiber serves as traction to help the peristaltic motion moving food in the gut. Food without fiber has had the time to move upwards in the exceeding colon. The fiber in food serves as traction to engage with the villi on the surface of the intestines. To better understand how food contributes to chronic diseases, watch the food element in the puzzle of health. In the next chapter, I'm going to show you how the pressure applied during defecation can cause many unwanted diseases. I just can't wait to tell you everything about it and I will see you soon. Goodbye.